because we begin tonight with the global musical phenomenon that is U2. Tomorrow night they play their first UK date in a world tour marking 25 years together as a band. Over that time they've become much more than just a top selling Irish rock group. Their music has become closely associated with their high profile campaign against world poverty. Their lead singer Bono is now regularly courted by politicians like Tony Blair and George Bush. As the Live 8 concerts once again focus attention on the campaigning role of music, Mariela Frostrup went to talk to you too. Everyone! It's Friday, it must be Brussels. You two have just arrived to kick off the European leg of their world tour. Uno, dos, tres, quince. After 25 years in the business as the world's most political rock band, you two are still going strong and have recently brought out their 14th album, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. Lights go down, it's dark, the jungle is the hair. It's been 25 years. Where do you sort of conjure up the excitement for, for going on tour again? You know, the endless effort that goes on behind Don't the sort of scenes. Don't you hate whinging rock stars, I know, Mariana. I love whinging rock stars. I uh, could just listen to them for hours you, on end. You've them for too long. I'm telling you, it's, this is an amazing thing that we've got going here. This band has always been a live band. You know, our, our recording career has been uneven, but the songs have sort of come into themselves when we played them live. So in a way, we have to do this to find out if we're any good. We also made a great record, I think. And, and that contributes to that the makes it's very For a that Presbyterian, it... that is a big, big <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun, man. Well done. We did make a great record, and that makes he it a lot a easier, record. you know, because as Larry is famous for saying, you know, you, to actually haul your ass around the world, you've got to have some great reasons, and we made a great record, and there's 12 great reasons to do it. To, to do this at this level um, is kind of mad. You know, we've all got families, you know, uh, like it, the easiest thing to do is actually just to go, you know what? Let's just get on. Bono has got things he wants to do. You know, I'd like don't to... Don't blame me. No, no, we don't know. We, we don't, he we was know. just about to tell I'm us what he'd like to do. He's about to open it. I don't know so why. I'm I'm I was going to open a... a, a Laundry. No, a shoe store. <laughs> Actually, yeah. There is a sense in the band that, you know, we've been, we've been given a lot. And maybe, maybe we sort of got away with it a little bit. And so there's a, sort of, there's a, a little bit of like, well, we need to prove yourself. That's what drives us, really. That's why we are doing this, uh, is because we feel that we still have it in us to do something extraordinary in a live context. Where to go when you don't know the electric car? For the first time in years, you 2 are performing several tracks from their first 1978 album, Boy, and there are comparisons to be drawn between it and their latest, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. It's not a sort of subliminal message as to as to where you're at nah, as a band. We're trying to push the, the other bookend out as far as possible because we're still so into what we're doing. You know, you can't be in exactly the same place, but I think the two song or the two albums are very much linked. There's other th thematic things, you know. Oddly enough, there's the the I just met Atomic Bomb has very similar themes to Boy. They're both about lot, you know, innocence. One as it's being, you know, held on to, just, just about to let go, and, and I suppose, and the other just looking back at the time trying when you were naive. It. Trying, to, <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember it. I mean, I remember coming to London as kids and we knew nothing. We were, you know, we were 17, 18, 19, but we really were 14, 15. So we were Irish, you know, suburban boys from Dublin, knew nothing. And, you wanted to get rid of that innocence. You wanted to be worldly wise. You didn't know how powerful you were. These days, politics are as big a part of what you two do as their music. 
But is this a natural pairing, the grand spectacle of the arena tour and a strong, at times uncomfortable, political message?